Morning world, it's 9am, it's Saturday the 3rd of September, 3rd of October even, I'm sorry, 2015. Bit of basic astrology stroke astronomy this morning. Yesterday morning I happened to be up really early in the morning, around about 5, 5.30 in the morning. And I was out walking and I was looking up at the stars because it was before dawn. And I thought, oh look, there's the moon, oh there's Venus. And then I thought... What's that next to Venus? Ooh, that's Mars. And then what's that next to Mars? Ooh, that's Jupiter. So, I went back and I had a look at one or two of my apps, modern terminology, and I realised that what I was looking at, and it's something actually really worth checking out. If you want to see astrology and astronomy in action, then if you're in a space in the world where there's a clear sky at about 5, 5.30 in the morning, over the next oh, week, then it's worth getting up just to have a look at this because you won't be able to miss Venus. It's the easily the brightest object in the sky. The moon is waning. It's well below quarter moon now and getting thinner and thinner as it gets closer and closer to the sun on the new moon. So the moon is getting less and less bright. Venus is by far and away the brightest object in the sky except for the waning moon. You can't miss it. It's three times brighter than any other star. So you'll spot Venus high in the sky if you're in the northern hemisphere to the southeast about 5 to 5.30 to 6 a.m. Just below Venus and slightly to the east stroke left, you'll see a really bright star and that's Regulus. That's the brightest, one of the four brightest stars in the sky. It's one of the four royal stars of the old Persians and it's at 29 degrees of Leo, the very last degree of Leo. Just below Regulus, you'll see a faint red dot. That's Mars. Okay, and then below Mars, quite a bit, maybe four or five finger widths, is another really bright star, brighter than any other star, but not as bright as Venus, and that's Jupiter. And you can see all of these around about an hour before sunrise, hour and a half before sunrise, local time, wherever you are. And if you're not sure what you're looking at, if you're not sure if you're looking at a planet or a star, I know I've told most of you this before, but hey, it's worth repeating. Stars twinkle, planets don't. So if you're looking at some, a really bright thing in the sky and you think it's a star and it's not twinkling, then you're looking at Venus, or if it's redder, Mars, or if it's, if it's almost as bright as Venus, then you're looking at Jupiter. Nice. As we speak, today the moon is in late Gemini. It's um, not void yet. It probably will be later today, but hey, it's going to be a short void moon because of Venus's position in late Leo. Um, what is represented is the ongoing square between Mars and Saturn. I know we're nearly at the end of it now. Mars has been squaring Saturn this last week and there's been the odd shouting match at the United Nations between Russia and America, between various political factions all over the world. But now Mars is coming up into opposition with Neptune. Mars opposite Neptune, I find it common in the horoscopes of people who have space disorientation people who feel much more comfortable being outdoors at night than they do in the daytime. Agoraphobics, claustrophobics. It's also quite common in the horoscopes of people who have a propensity to suffering from virals, toxins or poisons, or for that matter, any type of um, substance abuse, most commonly, of course, alcohol. So, um, with Mars opposite Neptune, we're going to see a diffusion of energy. Mars in Virgo is really industrious. It's about effectiveness, efficiency, using your fingers to a good skill. And lots of people who have got good massage skills often end up having Mars in Virgo. But Mars opposite Neptune, Mars opposite the planet of the deep sea, the dreamer, the illusionist, the fantasist, but also the spiritualist and the filmmaker and the dancer. Excellent time for dance. I often say to people that the single best therapy of all is dance because dance involves mind, body and soul. And with Mars opposite Neptune over the coming week, dancing is a really good option for a lot of people. So the more you dance, the happier you'll be. I don't mean going out clubbing or, or going to a dance school. I mean dancing while you're doing the washing up, dancing in the bedroom even. Um, dance is a really good therapy. And with Mars opposite Neptune, it's going to be very easy 
to get caught up in over-fussy, over-analytical subjects, to get too caught up in the fine detail and to miss the big picture. So perhaps dance or some other form of physical action that involves mind, body and soul blending together is a really good idea. For example, yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, Qigong, nothing too rigorous or physical, but something that's gentle and pleasing to the body. Mars opposite Neptune, that's around now, it's the dominant aspect for the next week, although it has to be said, with Jupiter trining Pluto as well, there's a lot of windows of opportunity for people to be actually, dare I say it, making some money. We shall see. It's going to be an interesting week, and I do expect some news around environmental and um, um, issues to do with the seas and the oceans, because of course Neptune rules the seas, and Mars opposite it is going to bring one or two things to the surface. Meantime, it's Saturday. I'll do my best to do a Sunday sermon tomorrow. Have a great day. Catch you later, folks. Bye.